Here we will explain the reassembly procedures. First, install the bearing. The reassembly procedures depend on the type of bearing, so check the bearing type. First, let's look at reassembly of a semi-floating bearing. This is the compressor side. Fully apply lube oil to the new floating bearing before placing it in the bearing housing. Reassemble so that the notch on the bearing end face is deeply inserted so that the pin is securely positioned in the notch in the bearing housing. Install the snap ring onto the bearing housing with the snap ring pliers. Install the snap ring with the rounded face directed towards the bearing side. Point the end gap of the snap ring to the right as seen from the compressor side. Install the bearing on the turbine side in the same way. Install the snap ring with its end gap pointing to the left, as seen from the turbine side. After installing the snap ring, check that the semi-floating bearing has the appropriate clearance in both the shaft and rotational directions. Next, let's look at reassembly of a full floating bearing. The full floating bearing has a free orientation. It can be reassembled pointing in either direction. Place the rounded side of the snap ring facing the bearing side and point the end gap downwards on both the turbine and compressor sides. Next, install the seal ring. Install the compressor side seal ring onto the oil thrower with the seal ring pliers. The end gap of the seal ring is gas tight. Install the turbine side seal ring onto the turbine rotor with the seal ring pliers. The end gap of this seal ring is straight. Straight seal rings are used interchangeably for both sides on all models except the RH133. Prepare the bearing housing for the next assembly step. Place the turbocharger on its compressor side on an appropriate block so that the rotor shaft end does not come in contact with the top of the table. Install the heat insulator onto the bearing housing. Now let's look at installation of the turbine rotor shaft. Apply lube oil to the journal of the turbine rotor shaft before reassembly. Face the end gap of the turbine side seal ring upwards and assemble it from the vertical direction. In the case of the RH133, install the metal sealing gasket between the heat insulator and turbine housing. Now install the turbine housing. Take care not to damage the turbine wheel. Install the turbine side stop plate and heat resistant hexagonal bolts that were kept apart during disassembly. Apply seizure prevention agent to the bolts. Turn the turbocharger upside down. Install the turbine housing on the bearing housing, referring to the marks made during disassembly. Apply lube oil to the direct side thrust collar, then insert it onto the turbine rotor. Apply lube oil to the thrust bearing, then install it so it is aligned with the parallel pins. Check that the installation mark for the thrust bearing is at the top. Take care that it is not skewed after installation or it might block the oil gallery. Apply lube oil to the distance piece and insert it. Apply lube oil to the anti-side thrust collar and insert it.
apply grease to the o-ring and install it onto the bearing housing groove. Fit it on neatly, taking care not to twist it. Insert the oil thrower into the compressor side sealing plate. Take care to point the end gap of the compressor side seal ring upwards. Match the sealing plate with the oil thrower to the alignment mark and install it in the bearing housing. Check the orientation of the punched arrow mark. Install the spring washer and hexagonal bolts. Apply grease to the rotor shaft. Match the impeller with the alignment mark and insert the impeller into the turbine rotor. Install the shaft end nut with a torque wrench. The nut has a left hand thread, so turn it counterclockwise. The tightening torque is 32.4 newton meters. Check that the installation position basically corresponds to the line marked during disassembly. If there is a large difference, you will have to reassemble it again. If the difference is small, tighten the nut with a torque wrench using the tightening torque specified in the table. Now measure the thrust clearance and the radial clearance of the turbine rotor. Measure in the same way as in disassembly. Check that the measurements are within the allowable range and enter the results on the record sheet. If the results deviate from the allowable range, reassemble again, keeping in mind the clearance values during disassembly. Measure the exhaust casing clearance. Check that the measurements are normal and enter the results on the record sheet. Compare the measurements with those made before disassembly to check that turbocharger cleaning was effective.